Alrighty, this is going to be a quick video on using object-oriented programming in LabVIEW to separate <coughs> drivers for hardware and be able to simulate hardware uh, on our system without actually changing the, uh, the top-level client code. So anyway, in order to do object-oriented programming in LabVIEW, I need to start with a project. And so we'll go ahead and create a project, and you see this uh, up here in the upper right-hand corner. And, uh, and I'm going to add a go new VI, and my VI pops up. There he is, and, uh, and we can save him. In fact, I'll need to save my project. Ask me if I want to save, and I can say yes. And, uh, and then there's my save dialog, and I can come to the desktop, add a new folder. And um, let's see, that'll be OP. And here we go, we got uh, the OP project. There's the project, and now it's going to ask me about this VI, and this can be hardware tester. So we're going to use this to. So the thing that I want to do here is I want to really have, um, I want to be able to select my hardware, and I want to be able to have whatever the instances. Maybe this is a simulated hardware. Maybe that if I'm running a multimeter, and there's like several different kinds, and I'd love to be able to use the power of object-oriented programming to make it so that I don't have to change my client code. So for example, if I had client code that configured and then, in fact, actually we can just go ahead and do that. Say we have a flat sequence structure here and maybe I want to run my code in two separate sections, which would be to uh, select and configure the hardware. And then over here, I could uh, init, use, and shut down test. And then, of course, these two things could be in very different places, and, and, um, and so this ends up making multi-developer software a lot easier, and this is essentially one of the big underpinnings of, of object-oriented programming. And so uh, in one place, in fact, it'll be right here, I'll want to select what that hardware is. And so, for example, here I can just go ahead and drop down an enum and say uh, hardware type and now I can have a, uh, let's see, hardware version one and simulated. And so clearly we're leaving space there for, for another versions of hardware. So then um, let's see what I can do next is now I'm going to want to say, okay, I want to be able to select a given uh, group of classes, a group of objects, and over here I want to use the same code no matter whether I'm doing simulated or uh, or real hardware. And so I need LabVIEW classes to do that. So I'll come into my project and I'll say create a new class and um, and I need a parent class and I call that my interface. And so this is the class under which um, the two uh, children here, the, uh, the hardware and the simulated, will inherit from. And uh, let's see to save that off and it'll give me interface and then one of the things that happens is because I'm going to have every uh, my hardware class my interface uh, class and my simulated class are going to all need VIs with the same names and I can't have the same names in the same folders that I need to create folders so I have an interface folder um, I'm going to create a hardware uh, v1 folder I'm going to create a simulated folder. And I'm going to go into the interface folder and I'm going to put the interface in there. And so I can double click on this guy and uh, oops, we'll click on the control. And I get the class pops up. And the class is really just a cluster that can only be bundled and unbundled by class members and we can control that. And I'm not going to worry about the private class data for now. Really what I want to do is I want to just get to the methods. And there's some, some important details about how, how LabVIEW makes, made some choices in here which can have profound effects on our, on our software design. But, uh, but for now I just want to get to the methods. So I'm going to go into this class and I'm going to say add, sorry, new VI from dynamic dispatch. And so what that means is that, that this VI can be selected by um, essentially by the type of uh, a VI that, or the, the, the instance of the, the object. I think LabVIEW calls these generics and then calls the uh, individual instances. I don't know the LabVIEW name for that. But, um, but now I have this, this VI and, um, and it looks 
pretty standard. We see we've got these two dynamic dispatch tabs up here, and we've got they've put nicely put the error and, and no error clusters in there for us. Uh, sorry, uh, terminals in there for us. And so now I can I can say, okay, well, what is the first method that I want to have an interface for? So if it, uh, for example, maybe this is the uh, I don't know. Maybe what we're going to do? We're going to move a motor, for example. And so this might be um, save him, and he is in the interface, and he will be called move motor. And I want to be careful with this because every single one of these classes is going to need a move motor vi. And so, for example, maybe he has a uh, motor voltage as an input, and then I will wire that up to the terminal, and then of course the, the connectors here will need to be identical. And um, and just so in here, actually, this is the interface class. So this is the top level class. And it shouldn't actually do anything. In fact, this interface should never get called. And so what I'm going to do, just for the sake of argument here, is I'm actually going to put in a one button dialog and, uh, and create a constant that says face has been called. This is an error. Um, incidentally, dialog boxes are very annoying, but, uh, but the reason I'm going to put them here is just so we can sort of show off the functionality. All right, so now I need two more classes that will inherit from those. So again, I'm going to come back to my project, and I'm going to create another new class, and I'm going to call uh, this class Hardware V1. And there he is, and I can then save him as well. It asks me if I want to save. I'm going to go into the hardware v1, and I have hardware v1 class, so that's good. And now here's the trick that we oftentimes mix. I need to go and make sure that the hardware v1 is a child of the interface class, so that uh, when I use the interface class in my generic programming, that it can be populated with the hardware v1 uh, methods. So if I go into properties for that class and go to inheritance, I can click change inheritance, and I can say and instead inherit from the interface class. And so now that that is done, um, I will then go in again and repeat new dynamic or dispatch from dynamic VI. Here it is. I can copy over my motor voltage because I need that. I can wire him up using the same pane. And, um, and then this is the hardware. And so presumably I could then put code that goes in, sorry, in here to, uh, to run, so this would be real hardware v1 code goes here. And so then in order to do this for a simulated class, I need one more um, group of classes. Here we go again. Um, save this guy off, and he now needs to be ex named exactly the same. So I need to make sure that this is move motor. And now move motor matches move motor here, so that's all good. And I've set up the inheritance, so I should be ready to go. In fact, I'm just going to go ahead and do this. I haven't updated my icons at all, but we'll figure that out later. So really what I want to do is I want to um, have the instance of move motor. And this is now I'm bringing down the generic. This is the parent class. And so um, over here in my hardware type, I'm going to select which type of hardware I've got. And so I have the options for hardware v1 and hardware v2. So if I go and grab a constant of type hardware v1, I can wire these guys out. And um, I've got a broken tunnel here, but these guys wire up. And so again, maybe I'll uh, put a panel on my front panel here to say, OK, we'll set the motor voltage. But I do have a broken tunnel, so I need to repeat this for simulated. And you'll get to see the, uh, the power of this as soon as we do. So again, I'm going to repeat my steps. Uh, Computer, or let's see, project new class, and this class is going to be called simulated. There's my simulated class, and again, properties, inheritance, change interface, select the interface class, inherit from selected, and there we go. And now I need, uh, in the simulated class, I'm going to have a new dynamic dispatch from template. Then we get this guy, and then I will save him. Ask me if I want to save. I'm going to make sure that I go into the simulated. And again, just like before, he has to be named move motor. And the reason is, is because we're going to use whichever move motor we pull up um, through our uh, the class that we pick. Let's see. And then there's simulated needs to be a class as well. So it asks me to save all of that stuff. 
And then just like the other move motors, it needs the identical block diagram. We've got broken arrows all over the place, so uh, we'll have a move voltage, and we'll wire this up. And, uh, and here, perhaps I can say, uh, in fact, here's my block diagram. Just like before, I can grab one button dialog, and maybe I'll end up saying create um, constant simulated voltage has been set. And again, I'm not connecting to actual hardware here. But I'll do the same thing here. Hardware V1 voltage has been set. Alrighty. And, um, and now I just need to go and here's my simulated type, and so I'll just go and grab him. And now this right there is where the interesting thing happened. So simulated is a type of VI, it is a type of class, and it wires up to the generic version, the, the interface version of move motor, as does hardware V1. If these wires are in conflict, it's because I messed up the inheritance and I forgot to do that over here. And now this is the generic version of move motor. And if I double click him, lab view gives me a dialog box that says, well, at runtime, I could pick either the interface or the simulated or the hardware V1. So which one do you really want to open? So I could click on one of those and it will then open that for me. I'm going to close all these guys up actually so we can get a better view of what's going on here. And, um, and so now if I go to run this, I can say, okay, well, presumably I could type in some motor voltage and I'll say, all right, uh, for the simulated hardware, I can run it. And sure enough, I get a dialog box. It says simulated voltage has been set. If I were to instead, before I would select the hardware V1, I can now say hardware V1 voltage has been set. And so what this means is, is that I can create a generic block of code that would initialize, um, could use some hardware, could have loops, do all our regular lab view programming, could shut down, and this could be independent of any type of hardware. And so then I just would populate over here um, my, if I maybe got a V2 software, so for example, if I did this completely here and said, oh, we just got hardware V2, all I have to do to update the code is create the V2 class and fill in the move motor and whatever other VIs that I've created, and now this program just works. We have, uh, we have made it possible to use the, uh, the open-closed principle so this software can be open for extension by adding additional classes and, and then keying them in in this one place right here. Um, but closed for modification as the core functionality of the class um, doesn't need to change when additional hardware is added. Hopefully that's a good introduction to how to use LabVIEW classes to substitute and emulate hardware. I hope that's been helpful.